and welcome to today's edition of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But first, what are we drinking? We're drinking Daniel O'Grady's Four Leaf Clover Stout. Are we leprechaun? A cotton? <laughs> when he's all upside down yeah, and yeah. ripped up. <laughs> clover. From the Clover Patch. <laughs> Today we're going to bring to you a French film. It is 2003's High Tension. It's like the first movie from the 2000s we've covered in a long time. <laughs> Pretty much. This movie is written and directed by Alexandra Aja. It stars Cecil de France, along with, for some reason, this person has one name, <laughs> kind of like Prince. Or yeah, whatever. or Cher. Just, and I don't even know how to pronounce it. My Win? Ma Win? My Win? My Win? My Win? Kai Win? <laughs> And Felipe Nyon is in this. So the movie starts out with um, Marie and Alex, and they're driving to Alex's parents' farm. We also see, while it turns dusk, there's this guy in this weird van, and he's like, oh, he's all making all these weird <laughs> grunting noises. Blah, blah. <laughs> Then you see the head drop out of the van, like yeah. it drops onto the ground, pan down to the head, which the head looks actually yeah. pretty creepy. Takes the meeting getting head uh, <laughs> to a different dimension here. We get to the house, we meet Alex's dad, and she's got herself a little brother too, <laughs> this little bastard who's like dressed in like a cowboy outfit, <laughs> running around. Like we would these days. <laughs> yeah. Marie goes into her room to kind of get settled in. She lays on her bed, puts her headphones in, and she starts getting a little busy on herself, I guess you can say. There's a van that drives up, and you see the headlights kind of drive up, and you see this weird hand press the doorbell. The dad goes downstairs to answer it. And Which is creepy because it's in the middle of nowhere. That's right. You hear like all these slashes and cutting sounds and everything. And the dad kind of goes up sort of halfway up the stairs, falls down, his head comes through the banisters and this guy just rams this like credenza type <laughs> thing. Right through his head, takes his head right off. For the first <laughs> kill of the movie, you can't get any better than that. That fucking, that sets the tone for the rest of the movie going forward. <laughs> so the mom wakes up and she kind of comes downstairs too and sees what's going on. Marie, meanwhile, takes her headphones out and she starts to hear all this and she hears the guy coming up the stairs. If this guy knows somebody's here, He'll look for He'll, me. Yeah, he'll look for me. So she tidies up the whole room and even the bathroom to make it look like nobody's been living there. And she hides under the bed. And he uncovers kind of half of the mattress and doesn't see anything. And he puts it back and he leaves. And lo and behold, Mary's underneath the bed, scared shitless. Marie gets out of her bedroom. She hears that guy coming and she hides in the closet with all those slats where she can see out, yeah. but he can't necessarily see in. Right in front of the closet doors, the killer grabs a mother and just slits uh. her throat. Almost get the sense that she sees her in the closet, it's like looking into her eyes as, yeah. as she's dying, which is fucking terrifying. And it's tense because yeah. Is she going to say something? Help or something or yeah. whatever, run or whatever, you yeah. don't know. <laughs> and she goes to Alex, and Alex is all chained up on her bed. But the brother is still alive, and they yeah. actually see the brother run out of the house. <laughs> little, little <laughs> yeah. bastard runs out of the house into the field. And then you just yeah. hear the gunshots, just boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Uh, that's the, that's the it. The look in yeah. Alex's eyes. Marie hides again, and the killer comes back into the house and takes Alex, puts her into his van. As he's coming around to the van to get in, Marie slips into the back of the van with Alex. Marie's telling her, oh, don't worry, you know, we'll, we'll figure this out, we'll get out of this. He stops at a gas station to fill up. Marie slips out into the gas station and tries to kind of alert the attendant, but... Yeah. At this point, the killers come back in to pay for the gas. Yeah, and he kind of, the tendon guy doesn't really know what's going yeah, he's on. Like, right? oh, what do I do? I don't know. Like, the killer asks for a nice bottle of scotch. <laughs> Jimmy goes to go get the scotch and Marie! takes an axe right to the gut. <laughs> Fuck, Jack Torrance style. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's just a sad waste of scotch, yeah. that's all. <laughs> so Marie sees this and goes and hides in like the bathroom. The killer does his due diligence and yeah. scopes the whole place out, goes into the bathrooms with this fucking axe, checks out the whole bathroom. But it's a big bathroom for a that, truck stop. That's true, yeah. It's, it's all huge. huge. It's like a sauna in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And you think he's gonna find her, but he doesn't. And he just takes a leak. And he leak. just takes a leak and <laughs> takes off. Marie runs to the phone and tries to call the cops and gets a hold of them. Like, okay, yeah, where are you? I don't know. I have yeah. no clue where I am. I was in a van. I don't know where I was. And well, yeah, but you have to tell us where you are if we're gonna help you. I don't know. And she gets <laughs> frustrated, just hangs up, takes Jimmy's keys and his car and a gun and a gun and hightails it after the killer he turns off and oh, where is he oh, fuck i lost him and then right behind her beam the headlights turn on and he starts ramming her yeah and that's where we're going to end the plot if you want to find out what happens at the end of high tension well keep watching the movie one of the best things about this movie which the title reveals yeah is the atmosphere and the high tension, yeah, right? Yeah, the pacing of it all and everything. Oh, it's fucking great. Exactly, and the way it unwinds, too, is, is great because you get a little bit of character development, and then the killer comes, and it just goes from, like, zero to a hundred. Yeah. Like, whoa, man, this guy's wiping out the whole family. Yeah. What is she going to do? Yeah. I like how it teases you, too, because because they're driving down the highway, back roads, whatever, and you kind of, ah, this is going to be Texas Chainsaw Massacre style. They're going to stumble upon a house they shouldn't or, yeah. or something's going to happen. But then they're like, oh, they just make it home. Well, what's going to happen now? Yeah. They're home. They're, <laughs> aren't they safe at home? No, oh. they're not. <laughs> Fucking guy comes to them. You yeah, know? yeah, exactly. It's the idea of it, right? You're in an isolated farmhouse yeah. that's like miles away from civilization. Yeah. So who's going to come and help you? Nobody. <laughs> exactly. Even you if did. you call the cops, by the time it takes them to get to you, well, fuck, that's like half hour or something you're, you're at dead. least, you know? Yeah. I've always found that whole farmhouse out the country thing kind of scary. Yeah. yeah. Always as a kid, you go to your grandparents' place or cottage and you go to bed at night like... There's no one around, if, which is fine, but there's also no one around to help. Exactly. Right? I think yeah. this movie is paced perfect where it, it's slow where it needs to be. Right when you're kind of like, okay, yeah, things need to pick up a little bit. Yeah. It picks up yeah. like right right <laughs> then, like, okay, shit starts hitting the fan, and then it slows down when it needs to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it becomes slow and tense, and then, oh, it ramps up. Like, it's perfect. Exactly. I think this movie is one of the most perfectly paced horror movies I've ever seen. Even as it gets slower, it's more tense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right? it's slow but tense. Yeah, yeah, and so you're still, you're yeah. like, you're wondering what's yeah. going to happen. And it's a bit of a mystery too, right? Yeah. It's like, who, what the fuck? Who, who is this guy? What's yeah. he all about? The characters are, are great in this movie for the simple fact that there aren't many. We're left with the killer, Marie and Alex, basically, throughout most yep. of the whole movie. Not many movies can stand on only three characters. Most slashers, it's like one person gets killed, a little bit of a wait, next person yeah. gets killed, you wait a little bit more, next person. You're introduced to a lot of people, Yeah, right? in this one, everyone gets killed right off the bat, and then it's just two people left. Yeah. And the rest of the movie is just those two people trying to survive. I think the music and the sound design in this movie is great. It's almost lack there of music. There isn't right. much. It's all just weird sound. It's enough to unnerve you and make you yeah. kind of feel tense. Again, it's very Texas Chainsaw Massacre-like with the weird kind of background noises and the atmospheric noises like the crickets. Or that pumping gas. Yeah, when you're pumping gas and it's yeah. It's like, ah, uh, like, yeah, just remind you, yeah, time is ticking. Exactly. Time's going by, and we gotta fucking do something about this, right? Yeah, or like his boots squeaking, yeah. and you just hear that. Yeah. They use like every sense available to make you feel tension, to exactly. make you feel high tension. That brings us to the kills, right? The kills in this movie are fucking <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah. Yes, the kills are great, and they're fun, and they're gory. But that's not what the movie is standing on. It's not what it's about. It's about yep. 
everything else. There is that underlying story that you don't necessarily get right away. You don't even think about. Yeah, you don't yeah. you don't think about, but it's there. And the movie stands more on that than anything. Which leads us to the twist. Yeah. You know, the twist in this movie is one of the great, I think, all-time horror movie twists that you don't really see coming. And it's cool for a newer movie too, right? Because yeah. you usually don't get this kind of dynamic and thought process in a newer film. Yeah, but I remember when I first saw this movie, I was like really impressed. I'm like, mm -hmm. ah, a new, a new, well, at this time, you know, <laughs> now the movie's getting, <laughs> it's almost 20 years yeah. old, holy shit. But at the time, I was like, ah, a newer horror movie, yeah. and I fucking really dig it. The way this movie plays out, everything about it, almost seems like a late 70s, early 80s kind yeah. of film, right? Something that should be out of 1981. Right, and you can <laughs> see the influence there, right? You see right. the you see the Texas Chainsaw Massacre influence with the whole back roads, farmhouse, and the way they use the lighting from the headlights. Mm -hmm. Look right. what your brother did to the door! <laughs> you see a bit of Halloween influence in the closet. Yeah, through the slats through and the everything. Through the slats and everything. And like, he's like, oh yeah, I know those doors. I've seen those doors before. Yep, yep. So that's the, the cool thing about it is that not only does the movie stand on its own, but it does pay a little bit of homage yeah. to some earlier horror movies. It's a great, great horror movie that's I kind of overlooked that thing. Yeah, and it'll leave you sitting on the edge of your seat. So check out High Tension, and until next time, keep drinking.